Welcome back, and let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our first reading today comes from us from the prophet Jeremiah. And I've mentioned this, it's been months and months ago now, uh, but when we had his just self-reflection in the gospel, you dupe me, O Lord, and I let myself be duped. A perfect thing to pray with, with this idea of trusting ourselves to God, and sometimes it's not as easy as we hope it would be. Going back to yesterday's reflection, I just I always have that pop in my mind when we're here from Jeremiah, although that's not what he's talking about today. He has a couple of phrases that, of course, we see as, I think, an anticipation of what Paul will say later in the New Testament. He said, Cursed is the man who trusts in human beings, who seeks his strength in flesh, whose heart turns away from the Lord. And later, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord, whose hope is in the Lord. He's like a tree planted beside the waters that stretches out its roots to the streams and then grows really strong. It says that in more words. Again, it makes me think of Paul when he says, When I am weak, I am strong. And this can be a tendency for us, especially, I think, in our culture where we have these different ideas of the American dream. Um, pick myself up by my bootstraps. I can do all these great things. And if I do put the hard work in, I can become whatever I want. And there's absolute truth to that. But the problem is that can lead us away from God sometimes. If we're doing all of our self-reliances on ourselves and on uh, the people around us, and we're not turning to God, that can become problematic. And so, Again, for our own examination, look at those different ways in which we don't turn to God and ask for his help. Now, maybe we are supposed to become the very rich, the very wealthy, and maybe that's what we're supposed to enter into, to be very successful in this world. Because some people need to be, obviously, so they can be the leaders and they can be the people that get the resources to help others. But we need to do that because that is what God has called us to do, what God has put before us. And so we always want to ask God, no matter where we are in our life, how can I best serve you? What do you want me to do with the gifts you have given me? as simple as they might be, or as great and magnificent as they might be. That ties into our gospel today where Jesus is speaking of Lazarus and the rich man who's dressed in purple garments, royal garments, and dined sumptuously each day. I love that phrase, sumptuously each day. Lazarus dies, he makes it home to heaven. Rich guy does not. And it's because he didn't take care of the poor. He didn't take care of Lazarus who sat at um, his door begging. I was, as I was reading this, reminded of a story of Cardinal George, that he was at this donor with a bunch of millionaires, maybe a couple of billionaires as well. Um, again, people who were entrusted with a lot of world, world, worldly wealth, and they needed to make sure they used it for the people around them. And Cardinal George was very clear. He said, the poor need you. They need your assistance. They can't take care of themselves for different reasons. They need your financial assistance, which, of course, they expected to hear because they expected to be sucked up to and to hear nice things. But then he, being a very blunt man, my few interactions with him, um, I enjoyed, were impressive, they were nice. And I see this being in line with it. He said, but you need the poor to keep you out of hell. And it's a great reminder that while the poor people needed their assistance, they needed to make sure that they assisted them for the sake of their own salvation. They were using their gifts given to them by God not just for their own good, and even to make themselves feel good, as we've had a couple of times in our readings where we do things so we get noticed, we need to do it for a genuine gift of God's people, taking care of the people around us, serving them, allowing God to use us as his vehicles of grace, and even if it is in the worldly pleasures, the worldly things that have been given to us, to use that not for ourselves, but for the sake of the church, for the sake of other people. Um, so maybe spending some time praying today, asking God to show you your gifts where he wants you again to serve the people around you, whatever that might be, whatever those gifts may be, whether they're financial or other gifts and talents that our Lord has given us, uh, because that's how we work out our salvation. As we continue this Lenten journey, let us pray for one another. God bless.